All right, and we're back now with section three, uh, which we're going to be talking about the types of chemical reactions. And this is a big section, so it'll probably be covered in a few uh, in a few videos. All right, so to get started, it's good to have an overview of the different types of chemical reactions that we'll be looking at. So let's take a look at that. There are six types of chemical reactions, and if you look at the screen, they are listed there as precipitation, acid-base neutralization, single replacement, combination, decomposition, and then finally combustion. Now you'll notice the six uh, reactions that are listed there are categorized into two main uh, umbrellas of chemical reactions. The first one is double replacement, and then the second one is oxidation reduction, or you may have heard before as redox reactions. Um, that doesn't mean that those are, if you hear that, that doesn't mean that those are separate types of reactions, but you can think of double replacement and redox reactions as the big umbrellas, and then the six chemical reactions fall in place. And if you take a look, and we'll be walking through them in detail, but on the right side, you can see the general format that the reactions take. And so this is a good slide to go back to as you're reviewing. Um, another way to look at these six types of chemical reactions is like this. Um, so it's the same slide that we just saw, but the ones that are in red are chemical reactions that are going to happen in aqueous solutions. In other words, they're reactions that happen in water. And the reason for that is because when you have the chemicals in water, they're gonna ionize. So they're gonna create ions and the ions will form new substances and that's what makes them uh, different, right? So uh, six types of chemical reactions, we'll walk through each one um, in detail, make sure you understand that, but that just kind of gives you a general overview of the types of reactions that there are. And um, to wrap up this slide, the three reactions that are in red, like I said, are the ones that happen in water. We actually have a whole topic on those types of reactions. That's topic 10. And so we go into more detail there. But this gives you an overview. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right. First reaction that we're going to start with, we're going to start with the combination reaction. This used to also be referred to as the synthesis reaction. Um, but it's more commonly referred to as a combination reaction. The key reaction or the key characteristic of this reaction is that it makes one product, right? So that's how you're going to be able to tell that you have a combination reaction. So the general form is A plus B yields AB. A, an actual chemical example of that would be the synthesis or combination um, to create water, uh, water, excuse me, sodium chloride. Um, so that comes from sodium and chlorine. But the key thing here is that if I look at the product side, there's one thing, right? So that's how I can tell that I'm looking at a combination reaction. Decomposition is the exact opposite. So decomposition reactions, you can tell they're uh, occurring because there's only one reactant, right? And so everything, it's, it's breaking down. Now, sometimes it's breaking down into elementary substances. Sometimes it's just breaking down into smaller compounds. But the idea is you have one reactant. And so here's a chemical example of that and it's breaking down into smaller parts. And so combination and decomposition are opposites of each other. Combination is one product, decomposition is one reactant. And then we get to the combustion reaction. So now we're in the, into the third type of reaction. And a combustion reaction is very, very specific. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be there in order for it to be considered a combustion reaction. Uh, we saw this in a previous video when we were looking at the balancing but a combustion reaction is where you have an organic compound that's reacting with oxygen in order to create carbon dioxide and water. So let's break that down again, right? So an organic compound, what does that mean? It's carbon-based, right? So it's a carbon-based compound. Um, sometimes it's just a hydrocarbon, meaning it's just a compound that has carbon and hydrogen. Other times it might have um, oxygen in it as well, right? But it, an organic compound is gonna be one that contains carbon. But that organic compound is always going to react with oxygen, which is O2. Sometimes when you're reading the problem, it's not going to say reacting with oxygen. Sometimes it'll just say simply um, methane combusts or methane burns in air or burns. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't explicitly call out the oxygen. So you need to make sure that you understand that a combustion reaction is always going to have oxygen as one of the reactants. And here's the cool thing, the products of a combustion reaction are always carbon dioxide and water. It will never change. So when we look down here, the general form, well, it can't really get 
too general, right? Because the only thing that's variable is what the carbon-based compound might be. So this is the only thing that'll change. Everything else is the same. It's got to react with oxygen, and carbon dioxide and water are always going to be your products. So if you take a look at some chemical examples down here, this would be the combustion of methane. So you have methane is your carbon-based compound. It's a hydrocarbon specifically, but it's reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And then if you look at this second example, this is methanol, um, carbon-based compound still reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So a combustion reaction is very easy to spot because it's so specific in its definition. All right, so we're, move, we're moving and grooving. We've talked about three types of reactions so far. Um, we're moving on to the fourth type of reaction, which is a single replacement reaction. So now we're looking at chemical reactions that are a little bit more, um, not complex, but there's more to it. So in a single replacement reaction, this is defined as a chemical reaction where one element is replacing another element in the compound. And so how do you know which elements switch? Like replaces like. So if the element that you're that is by itself is a metal, then it's going to switch places with the element that's also a metal in the compound. How do you know if you have a single replacement reaction? A way you can tell is if you have an element and a compound as your reactants. So let's take a look at the general form and then we'll look at a chemical example. Okay, so A would indicate that that's the that, that element. And then BC is the compound. And you can look on the, the product side. You've got B now that has been replaced and A took its spot. So if you think about what happened here, right? So what happened is A came over here and swapped out spots with B and B was displaced, right? And so um, if I were to ask you, okay, what kind of element was um, letter A? You know, was it a metal or was it a non-metal, right? Based on what it's switching with, look at A is switching with B. And remember, like replaces like. Well, if BC represents an ionic compound, what element is always written first in an ionic compound? It's the metal, right? So apparently A switched places with B, which is representing a metal. And so that tells me that A must also have been a metal. Um, an example of that is this down here. So aluminum is reacting with copper to chloride. So here's the element that's by itself. Here's the compound. And then notice what happened. Aluminum is gonna switch place with copper because aluminum is a metal. So it's gonna replace the metal that's in the, the compound. Notice though that when you write your new products, you need to write your new products appropriately. So what I mean by that is um, you have two chlorines right here because of what it's bonded to, which is copper. Um, in this case, copper has a positive two charge. But when aluminum now bonds to chlorine, notice it's not AlCl2, it's now AlCl3. Why is that? Well, because aluminum is a positive three charge. So you need three chlorines to cancel it out. So it's always a good idea or it's, it's always good to remind yourself that when you're creating your products, you need to make sure the products are written correctly. Just because chlorine had two over here doesn't necessarily mean chlorine will have two on that side. You need to look at what it's bonding with. But the key thing to notice in this uh, type of reaction though is that the elements are switching places uh, and the key characteristic is that it's an element reacting with a compound. Now, what's a little tricky about uh, single replacement reactions is that not all of them are actually going to happen. So how do you know if a single replacement reaction is going to take place? You need to look at the activity series. And so I have an activity series um, to the right here. This is a, a form of this activity series is also on the back of your periodic table that was handed out in class. But you can look at the activity series to determine if a cationic replacement reaction is going to take place. What does that mean, cationic single replacement? Remember, what is a cation? It's a positive ion, and, and metals produce positive ions. So essentially what that means is, if you're looking at a single replacement reaction where metals are switching, you need to check the activity series to see if the reaction will actually take place. And so here's how you think about it. The higher up you go on the activity series, the more reactive the element. The lower you go, the less reactive. And so notice what elements are kind of down here towards the bottom, right? It's things like gold, silver, 
uh, copper. These are elements, these are metals that don't react, right? That's why we make jewelry out of them, because they don't react. Um, versus metals that are up here, lithium, potassium, those are very reactive metals. And so how do you use the activity series? Well, here's how you do it. Let's say I'm looking at this first reaction right here. Okay, this is a single replacement reaction. Okay, you have zinc. And so zinc is a cation, so it's going to want to replace the cation in the compound, which is the hydrogen, right? So hydrogen, even though it's not a metal, it is a cation, and so it is part of the activity series. You can see hydrogens right here. So in order for zinc to potentially replace hydrogen, zinc has to be more reactive, right? So zinc is up here, and hydrogen is down here. So since zinc is higher up on the activity series, it's more reactive, and therefore it will react. So zinc will actually replace hydrogen. And notice what our products are. The element that gets booted out by itself is the hydrogen. Notice now that hydrogen's by itself, it has to be written as H2. It, was, it wasn't H2 in the compound because it was bonded to chlorine. But we can't just write hydrogen alone. That's why it has to be written as H2. So hydrogen is going to get out here. And then zinc is going to take the place of hydrogen and bond with chlorine. So when zinc bonds with chlorine, zinc is positive 2, chlorine is negative 1. So that's why there has to be a 2 here. So once again, a reminder, make sure you're predicting your products accurately. But the key thing from this slide is that I want you to see is how to use the activity series. Let's look at the second one. The second one has copper that wants to potentially replace the hydrogen. So copper wants to take the place of hydrogen just like that. In order to do that, copper has to be more reactive. Copper is just below the hydrogen. So copper is not reactive enough. So if I drop copper in hydrochloric acid, nothing will happen. So if I asked you to predict the products, you wouldn't predict the products like we did up here because nothing actually takes place. You would literally just write no reaction because that's what's going to take place. We've got two more reactions to cover, but I'm going to save those for the next video.